Welcome back aliens, this is Navin Reddy from Talisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about multi-threading. Now what exactly it means? You know when you work with two different applications, so let's say we are living in a world of multitasking, so we can run, we can work with multiple tasks at the same time, right? So let's say you're typing a document on MS Word and you're playing a song at the same time. So let's say you're listening to a music of maybe any, any person, at the same time you're typing a document now. So you're, you're using two tasks at the same time, right? It is called as multitasking, right? But let's say if you talk about one task, which is MS, MS Word, now that's one process, right? So we, we have task, which is process. And in MS Access, or sorry, in MS Word, if you're typing a document and if you make any spelling mistake, so parallelly while you're typing, at the same time, it is checking for the spelling mistakes, right? So that means inside your MS, of, MS Word, which is one process, we have some small units right we have some sub processes right and those sub processes will be called as threads so what is what is a thread it's a unit of a process so let's say if you take a process break that process you will get threads okay uh, now what why exactly we need threads here is so we have three different application of threads again we'll talk, we'll talk about uh, how to implement threads how to create a thread how to uh, run a thread but before that let's understand why we require threads so the first reason, we are living in a world of multi-core processors, right? Initially, we used to have, have one core processor, then we have dual core, now we have quad core, we have octa core, right? So what is octa core CPU? It means you have eight cores. So instead of having one single core, we have eight cores now, right? And when you run an application, when you create any Java application, you only use one thread. Okay, so even if you have not created any multi thread application now, so let's say if you have created addition of two numbers, if you have written a code for addition of two numbers, you have already used a thread. So when you run any, any when you get an exception in Java, where, what exception you get? You get exception as exception in thread main. That means main is a thread. So by default, in every Java application, in J every Java code, we have at least one thread which is main right so let's say you have uh, you have let's say you have 500 elements okay you have a collection you have an array of 500 elements and you want to multiply each element by two okay so it will take at least some time maybe let's make it five seconds uh, not five seconds let's say it, it will take eight seconds so it will take eight seconds to process your uh, to process your 500 elements right because by default, if you have these elements, it will take only one core. So even if you have core core machine, even if you have a core core machine which have four cores, it will occupy only one core. But let's say if you want to use all the four cores, you have to use four threads. So by default, uh, by default we have only one thread which is main. So we have to create three extra threads. Or we can what we can do is we can create four different threads, and main will call all these threads. So we have T1, T2, T3, T3, and T4 okay now since all these threads are working at the same time on four different cores which can run parallelly you can complete the same task in two seconds okay so instead of wasting eight seconds now we are using all four cores we can we can do it in two seconds and that's the power of multi-threading so that's one use the second use so let's say if you are if you have ever used a android phone or ios phone or maybe any smartphone in, including windows so if you have if you have used any of this phone uh, you use you, you might have used Amazon app on that so let's say if you are going to Amazon app and when you click on a button let's say if you are searching for a product at that time the request is request went to the server okay and your app is waiting for the response from Amazon so let's say you're searching for a product let's say you want to buy a new shoe you will search for a shoe on your app when you type shoe and search request goes to the server right and then you'll be getting the response right now in this scenario, it will take some time, maybe one second. So in that one second, your app will be your, your, your app will be freezed. What you want, you want to use the app, even if it is uh, ba in background, it is going for a request. So your main thread will not send the request. It will create a new thread who will send the request. Again, we have to use two threads here. One thread who will interact with the user, and the second thread will be going for the server request. Okay, so. If you are ever going for Android programming, you know you'll be knowing what I'm saying now. So we, we use something as async task there. So that's the second use. 
The third use is, so let's say you're creating a web application in Java and uh, you have servlets, as you know, so you have servlets in Java using which you can create web applications. So when you send a request from client to server using servlet, so what you do, you send a request, so servlet will process your request. Let's say at the same time we have five users who want to access the same servlet. So what your server will do, it will create five different servlets. Okay, it will create five different threads of the same servlet. Okay, so we use threads there also. So there are lots of use of threads. Okay, the first one we can use all different cores. Second, we can send a synchronous request, and the third one we can create, we can we can access web applications by using multi-threading. Okay, so there are there are multiple use here. And even for game development, let's say you want to build, if you if you want to be a game developer, threads are very important. For right, example, when you are playing Counter-Strike, at the same time you are running, at the same time your partners are running, at the same time opposition team is running. So it's everything is happening at the same time, right? So again, we have to use multi-threading there. Now question arise, how to achieve threads? So let's say we have, we have an object here. So this is the object of thread, okay? Uh, so thread is an inbuilt class in Java. So you just have to say thread, t1 equal to new thread, you will get a new thread here, right? It's that easy. But hold on, this will not do the stuff you want. So what you want this thread to do is, uh, this thread is, is responsible to convert the array. So we have, we, have, we have an array of five elements. You need to multiply each element by two. So we need, to, we need to ask this thread to do it for you. But the problem is this thread doesn't know what you want, right? So what you have to do, you have to create a class, okay, in which you will specify what you want. Okay, so you will create a class, let's say, let's name that class as my thread, and in that you will be having a method which is public void run. So every thread needs a method called run method. Okay, so run is responsible to do the stuff you want. Sounds good. Now in this run method, you can take the array and you can multiply each element by two. It's that simple, right? But to achieve the true power of threads, you cannot make a simple class. Your class should be a thread. So you have to say, my thread, which is class my thread extends thread, that's compulsory, right? So we have to say extends extends thread. Okay, so that's one way. And then we have to create the object of thread again. So we have to say thread t1 equal to it's new my thread now, not just thread. It is new my thread. Okay. Now when you say t1 dot run, it will call your method. But hold on to achieve parallel if you want a new thread so by default we have one thread which is main right so you have a main thread here but parallel if you want to start a new thread you have to say start so if you call run it will not create a new thread for you you just have to say dot start because start will create a new thread and it will call a method run so you don't have to call run it will automatically call run when you call a start method okay so that's one way uh, so threads has multiple methods. You can also use method like uh, sleep. So let's say you, you are running a thread and you want to wait for two seconds or three seconds. In that scenario, you can apply, you can use a method called a sleep. So sleep is a static method which takes milliseconds. So let's say you want to sleep it for two seconds. You have to specify 2000 as a parameter. So 2000 milliseconds is one is two seconds, right? Uh, so that's one method. We can also use wait and notify. So there, those are two methods. Uh, we can also st stop the thread, we should not do, okay, so thread will be stopped automatically. Yeah, so that's that's how you use thread. Uh, but hold on, let's say we have, so in order to create a thread, we have to say uh, new thread, right? Uh, but there's a problem here, uh, we have to say extends thread. But let's say we already have a class called as A, and my class, which is my thread, want to extend A now. Now, since in, in Java, we cannot achieve multiple inheritance, right? So we cannot say a comma thread, right? That's why we use an interface which is runnable. So there's one more way of creating a thread is called as runnable interface. So now this time, instead of using extend thread, what we can do is we can say class my thread implements runnable. The advantage will be runnable as a method has a method called as run. Okay, so using which you can achieve the same properties of thread. Okay, so you, you have two ways of creating thread. The one way is by creating a thread class or by extending a thread class. The another way is using runnable interface. Sounds good. So let's say now we have this 
uh, 50 elements okay not 50 elements let's say we have this 80 elements and I want to double each element here so what I will do instead of creating one thread I will create eight different threads because I'm using octa code machine I will, I will create eight different threads and each thread will have 10 elements so so from 1 to 10 first thread from 21 to or from 11 to 20 second thread and 21 to 30 third thread and so on right so it will consume less time compared to one thread so multi-threading concept is very important when you go for software development when you go for game development like when you go for app development so make sure you understand the theory part so that will you can work practically so in the next video we'll be talking about the practical implementation of thread by using thread class or by using runnable interface so that's it that's it from this video do subscribe for further further tutorials and thank you so much for watching